In this video, I will be calculating the drawdown of Russell 2000, which is a small cap stock market index of the smallest 2000 stocks in the Russell 3000 index. So after calculating the drawdown, we will then determine the maximum drawdown and also the drawdown duration. Drawdown is the loss in value incurred in any continuous period of negative returns. And we will measure drawdown as the cumulative peak to throw loss during a continuous period. Now, why is drawdown important for investors? If a manager experiences larger drawdowns, then that manager may not be suitable for an investor with a shorter time horizon. So, to start off, we will first calculate the return, the monthly return, based on the adjusted close. So, for example, here for 1st of September 2019, I will take the adjusted close, divide by the previous month's close, then minus 1. So we have the return. I'll convert this to, uh, let's say, four decimal places, and then I'll just copy the formula downwards. Right then, for the cumulative return, so for the first period, that will be 1.9086%. Okay, and then following that, we will calculate the compounded return. So I'll take 1 plus the previous period's return times 1 plus the current period's return minus 1. So that gives us the cumulative return for the two months. And then we'll continue to do that until the very end. So you can see that the cumulative return becomes a negative 22.86% on 1st March 2020. Okay, but then it becomes up, it goes all the way up to 57.88% on 1st of Mar March 2021. Right, so now we have the return and the cumulative return. Now we will calculate the drawdown. So the drawdown starts when there is a negative return among uh, for that particular period. So in this case, I'm just going to write the formula. If the return is negative, then we will set this to the return. Else, uh, we will just leave it empty. Right, so I'll just convert this to a percentage and copy that down. So we can see that there are some periods where the return is actually negative. So I'll just put a conditional formatting so to highlight any negative returns. So you can see that there's a very large uh, negative return on 1st of March 2020. So now we are going to calculate the cumulative drawdown from 1st of September 2019 up to 1st of March 2021. Now to do that, I will just write... Um, a function using minimum. So we'll take the minimum of 1 plus the previous period's return, which in this case is blank, multiplied by 1 plus the return for the month, and then minus 1. Of course, uh, then I will set 0 as the other uh, number. So we'll take the minimum of the cumulative return or 0. Right, so let's see how that works out. So of course we get zero for a start, but then as I copy the formula downwards, let's say if I copy up to this point, okay, so it will be zero all the way because uh, in this case, for all these points, it will be a positive return, which is higher than zero. So the function is to take the lower of the two. Okay, so that you still get zero up to 1st of uh, December 2019, but come 1st January 2020, the cumulative drawdown starts to turn negative, right? Because now the return here would be negative 3.2611%. So that will be lower than zero. So that's why here the cumulative drawdown starts to turn negative. So let's continue to drag this downwards. Okay, so if I drag this down, we now have negative 11.51%, which is the compounded return of 3 negative 3.26% and negative 8.53%, right? So if you want to calculate this, uh, it is as simple as taking 1 plus a negative 0.0326, of course this is in brackets, okay? And then multiply by 1 plus a negative 0 0.0853, Okay, and then you minus 1. So that gives you negative 11.51%. Continuing on, we will now copy the formula downwards, okay, up to the very end. 
So what we'll observe here is only the losses. So they will accumulate the losses up to the point of recovery. So of course, uh, on 1st of March 2020, we'll see that the cumulative drawdown is actually the largest among all the, all the numbers uh, we have here. So at this point, we can observe that the drawdown began on 1st of January 2020. So this is where the drawdown uh, begins. And uh, the maximum drawdown is on 1st of March 2020, where the maximum drawdown is 30.89%. So this is the maximum drawdown. All right, and then subsequently, in the next period, we don't see anything that is larger than 30.89% in magnitude. So on the very next number, okay, this is where the recovery, okay, the recovery begins. And all the way up to 1st of October 2020, we, will st we still have a negative number here. So the cumulative drawdown is still there. But on 1st of November, the cumulative drawdown becomes zero. Okay, so at this point, we say that the drawdown is, has been recovered, right? So that is um, the timeline that we have for the drawdown. Right, so of course, if I show this on a chart, it will be, of course, clearer. So let's say if we were to plot this on a chart, let's do a line chart here. And then uh, we will select the data. And then uh, for the first part, I'll probably put in the cumulative return and the data will the data point will be selected here and uh, the axis will be the dates September to March All right then we'll add another axis for the cumulative drawdown and select the data here right and same axis and we are done all right, so just a bit of cosmetics, just, just change the chart type and uh, probably I will put in the, change the chart type and I'll just put in a marker. Okay, so it's clearer where the drawdown begins and where is the maximum drawdown. So from this particular graph here, uh, what we can observe is uh, for this orange line. Okay, so let's put in the legend so it's clearer. Okay. So the orange line here would be the cumulative drawdown, which uh, begins on 1st of January 2020, uh, this point here, and then it drops to the maximum drawdown, okay, uh, on 1st of March 2020, and then after that, the recovery begins, and then uh, the drawdown recover is recovered on 1st of November 2020. Now, of course, uh, we will not, uh, coming back to the calculation, if you notice that on 1st of November, the return is actually 18.2869%, which is actually greater than the loss, the cumulative drawdown of negative 7.79%. Uh, if you compound, if you were to factor in 18.29%, the cumulative number would definitely be greater than zero. Okay, but for cumulative drawdown, we will set the minimum number as, uh, we will take zero here, okay, as the highest number, and it will never go above zero. So just a bit on uh, the just to clarify on uh, the max here. Now, uh, in this case, uh, the next part that we're going to talk about is the drawdown duration. So the drawdown duration is the total time from the start of the drawdown until the cumulative drawdown recovers to zero. So there are two phases here. The first part is the drawdown phase, which is when it starts. Okay, when it starts on first January twenty twenty. To the trough which is the bottom part that's on 1st of march 2020 okay so we count that as one two and three that's three months to reach the bottom the trough and then the recovery phase is from the trough the bottom to the zero cumulative return so that is eight months so we say that the drawdown duration here is 11 months okay from the start to the end it takes about 11 months to recover so for an investor who say invest in the Russell 2000 index, okay, it will take them about 11 months to recover, okay, from let's say a particular period of continuous loss, okay, if that series of loss were to recur again. Right, so that's a uh, uh, drawdown, 
okay, um, which is important for investors. Okay, if they have a very short time horizon, then they may not be able to tolerate such a long period of continuous losses.